Hi students, this is lesson 6.1. I'm gonna go over just a couple of the examples about graph features. I know we did this in class, but I just wanted to make sure that you had a video to go along with it. So I'm gonna move past the definitions. Those were ones that we did go through in class and you do have those slides to review. Um, and we're gonna go right into this one here. So. This is page three and four in your packet. And we're talking about the features for these different graphs. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in this graph. So you'll, have, you'll be able to see the graph as we work through this. So go ahead and reference it as I talk about these different features. The first thing we're looking for is the domain. So we're looking for which X values am I allowed to use? So for the domain, I can see I can use every input except for right here is where we have some things going on, right? So when we look at this, we see there's a vertical asymptote there. So we see we can't use zero for this part, right? It's gonna get infinitely close to that, but not touch. But then we do see there is a point here that's filled in. So this tells me all real numbers are going to work for the domain. Now for the range, the highest value we're going to get for an output is right here at 12. And then we know that this is gonna extend forever um, going to negative infinity. So let's go ahead and fill that out. For our domain, we can have negative infinity to positive infinity and range, we're going to have negative infinity up to and including 12. So we will actually for 12 have that um, closed bracket. Okay, location and type of discontinuity. Let's take a look back at our graph. So I see there's one discontinuity here, and it is an infinite discontinuity. Remember, we're going to say the type of discontinuity and which input creates this situation. So we're going to say infinite at x equals 0. So you're going to state the type of discontinuity and where it occurs. Horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So we already talked about the vertical asymptote of x equals 0. And in this case, there are no horizontal asymptotes. The next thing will be to identify special points, x and y intercepts. So as you look on your graph, sometimes we'll have to estimate. Um, I have negative 18, 0, negative 15, 0, negative 10, 0 negative one, zero, and then it's gonna go all the way out and to the right, 25, zero. Now, you can't really see that, but we do see this is linear with a slope of negative one. We're decreasing and going to the right one. So we can go ahead and uh, continue that to get to the x-intercept. The y-intercept we see is up at zero, 10. So these are all to be named as points. Okay, the next thing is talking about where are the values positive. So you can use highlighters and different things to kind of help you visualize, but positive is always above the x-axis. So we want to know where do we have those positive values? What are the intervals? So I have for the interval here, let's see, negative 15, 16, 17, 18. I am starting here at negative 18. So I have from negative 18 to negative 15, we're going to go from negative 10 to negative 1. So it's positive values from negative 10 to negative 1. Union. Now we're going to actually use a bracket because look at when I plug 0 in, I actually get a positive value of 10. When I plug in, let's say negative 10, I get an output of 0. Zero is not positive nor negative. So we're not gonna be using that uh, as a bracket. We're gonna only use it as a parenthesis. But again, if I plug in zero, I actually get a positive value. So we're gonna say for this last one, zero, including zero, up until 25. Okay, intervals of negative values. Now we're gonna go ahead, of course, and look at 
the rest of this, which is below the x-axis. So we're going to look at these values, and this is going to be way out here somewhere. We will um, reach below the x-axis. Okay, so we're going to say for intervals of negative, we're going from negative infinity to negative 18. Union, we're going to go from negative 15 to negative 10. Union, negative 1 to 0. Union, 25 Sorry, I'm kind of running out of space to infinity. Let me do that better so you can actually see it. Okay, let's try that again. So union, and then I'm going to put it over here, um, 25 to infinity. And I'll switch color so I don't mix you up when you're writing these. Okay, now intervals of increasing and decreasing. This is talking from left to right. So it's always like you read a book. If you were to walk on this curve, we're going up we're going down, we're going up, we're still going up, we're going down, and we're going down, 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 and then we change to up, and finally down for the rest of the way. So you're going to pretend, again, you're walking on the curve from left to right. When are you increasing and when are you decreasing? Okay. So intervals of increasing, we're going from negative infinity to negative 16.5, about, okay. Union, negative 12 to negative 4. Union, 13 to 17. So we have three different regions that are increasing. Okay, let's look at the decreasing. We have four of them, negative 16.5 to negative 12, union, negative 4 to 0, union, 0 to 13, union, 17 to infinity. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so those are the four regions where I am decreasing. All right, now we're going to look for local max and mins. So when I look for the local max, I'm looking for any high points. So in this case, I go from increase to decrease. That's a maximum. Increase to decrease. That's a maximum. Increase to decrease. That's a maximum. There's three of them. And then if we're looking for the minimums, decrease to increase, okay, um, and decrease to increase here. So I only see two in this case. All right, so let's go ahead and document those. So local maximum, we have the value of 1.5, that's the output, and that maximum occurs at x equals negative 16.5. We have 8 at x equals 17. And we have 12 at x equals negative 4. So those are the three different local maximums. Now local minimums, we have two. We have negative 4 at x equals negative 12. And we have 2 at x equals 13. Now the next step is saying the absolute max or min. So we want to see what is the greatest or smallest output this function will ever take on. Now let's take a look at this. You see this arrow? And again over here and here. This is telling me there is no absolute minimum. So right away I can say none. Because we're never going to actually reach negative infinity. We're going to approach it, but we're never going to reach it. So we will say that there is none for that. This is our absolute maximum. And that value is at, it looks like at 12. Okay, so we'll say the absolute maximum is 12 and it's at x equals negative four and there is no absolute minimum. Do not write negative infinity. You will say there is no maximum or minimum in this case, um, absolute value. Now the end behavior, we're gonna say the limit 
as x approaches infinity of this function. That's the right-hand behavior. So if we look at the right-hand behavior, as I approach infinity, where's my arrow going? It's going down to negative infinity. So this is negative infinity. We'll do it for the left side. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function f of x. Let's take a look. As we approach negative infinity, we're getting closer and closer to negative infinity. Where is the function going? Down to negative infinity. Okay, let's take a look at the second one that's still in your packet and let's make sure that we have this practice together as well. So we have this kind of graph going on so we can see different things happening. I see right away that there's a jump discontinuity. I see some local mins, a local max, local min, local max, local min. So I'm seeing some of those things going on. I'm looking for, hmm, where do I see positive values? Everything above the x-axis. Okay, so we're seeing all this kind of stuff happening here. And let me see. Okay. We also see this looks like we're getting closer and closer here to a horizontal asymptote. I don't see any vertical asymptotes. Uh, we can look at the negative region, which would just be here. Um, we can see end behavior. So I'm just kind of getting a feel for this graph. The end behavior as we go to positive infinity is getting closer and closer to 11. Okay. And the end behavior as we go to negative infinity, we can see it's going up to positive infinity. Now let's pretend like we're walking on the graph again. We're decreasing until we hit this local min, right? And then we start increasing. Still increasing. Oh, now we're decreasing. Decreasing. Now we're increasing. We're increasing here. We're decreasing. Increasing. And we're actually going to continue to increase, even though it's going to be teeny tiny increments, we're still increasing. Okay, so let's try to get some of this stuff written down. Let's see what we have. So domain for this is going to be all real numbers. There's no issues there. And the range, we're going to have a bracket. The lowest value is negative 8. And it's going to go all the way up to infinity. Location and type for this one, and again, keep your eye on the graph as you're looking at this. We have a jump discontinuity, and this occurs at x is equal to 2. Horizontal asymptote is an equation y equals 11, and there is no vertical asymptote. The x-intercepts, so I have negative 16, 0, negative approximately 1.50, and about 1.50. And the y-intercept I have as 0, negative 8. Okay, now we're going to talk about those intervals of positive values. So the first interval of positive values is negative infinity all the way up to, let's see here, Oh, we actually can only go to about negative 16 because negative 16 is actually right on the x-axis. Okay, so we have to kind of break that up a little bit. Okay, so really when I was drawing this, what I should have done is, let's get that green back. I should have said here, given it a space, and then keep going. Because if it's actually on the x-axis, we know that 0 is neither negative nor positive. Okay, so we have negative infinity to negative 16. Then we're going to continue on negative 16, and that's going to go to about negative 1.5. And then we have from about, let's see here, Let's see, 1.5. Oops. So 1.5 until infinity. Okay. 
All right, so those are all our positive values. Now our negative values are just one region. We have the negative from negative 1.5 and then to 1.5. And we don't have to worry about any, there's no x-intercepts in between there at all, so we can just do that full region. Okay, intervals of increasing. So for increasing, we're going from negative 16 up until looks like negative four. And then we're going for increasing. Let's see, we're going from zero to nine. Okay. And then we're going from 12 to infinity. Intervals of decreasing, we have negative infinity and we're going to about negative 16 there. And then let's see, we're decreasing again at negative four to zero. And then there's one little last bit of decrease from nine until 12. Okay, local maximums. So let's look at our local maximums. We have a local max of 12, and this occurs at x equals negative four. We have another local max of nine, and this occurs at x equals nine. Okay, so those are our two local maxes, and we have three local mins. So we have zero at x equals negative 16. We have an output value of negative eight, which occurs at x equals zero. And we have a value of 5, which occurs at x equals 12. So those are the local minimums. Now we're looking for absolute maxes and mins. So let's see here. Absolute max for this one, there is none. And we can see with this arrow, right, this is going up to infinity. That's not going to happen. Now, this is the absolute minimum. Nothing else is going to come down this far. So we can say, or further than this, it's negative 8, which occurs at x equals 0. And then the last part of this is our end behavior. So we want to write this the limit as x approaches infinity of the function. This is asking for the right-hand behavior. And that's where that horizontal asymptote, it's approaching 11. And then the left-hand limit as x approaches negative infinity, that's the left hand of this function, is infinity. And so those are the types of features you'll be able to identify when you're looking at these unique.